Hi, Hiram here. Today I'm going to do my first test on this IsoClean 2.0 isopropyl stove. This is one that John Fong from over at Flatcat Gear sent me to uh, play around with, do some tests on. In the past, I had gotten to play with his prototype of this stove. I'll put some links down below to where I did these videos before. Interesting stove. And it is a stove, not a burner. It does have the built-in pot stand and the same way with this one. So I consider this a stove, not a burner. Now, in this previous one, it had a little bit of problems where some of the uh, isopropyl alcohol would drip out through the pot stand. Not a big deal, but looks like he's taking care of that now. Okay, let's see. I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol 91%. You can either use 91 or what, 70? 70% uh, alcohol, but I like, well, for what I, I don't like isopropyl alcohol, but it is something that can get just about anywhere. You can get this easier than you can denatured alcohol. So even though you have some sooting problems with this, it's a very handy thing to get. So I'm going to do a test here. I have 20 milliliters of isopropyl set there ready to go. Let me go get my water prepped and I'll be right back for a test. Okay, I'm back. Got my water prepped. Hopefully it'll drop down. I just wanted to let you see here that John put a uh, carbon felt disc in there. I don't see anything in the instructions about it unless I missed it, but I'm figuring that it must go into the into the burner to the stove. So I've got 20 milliliters of 91% isopropyl alcohol. In the instructions, which I must say are some of the best, I don't know if you can see that, some of the best instructions I've seen on a stove. He really goes to detail. John does, I mean. And it, he said that this is basically a fair weather stove because it doesn't like the cold temperatures. I don't think it's so much the stove as it is the isopropyl alcohol just does not like cold weather. John had said that uh, if the stove is too cold, you'll get a little soot on the bottom of your pot. The stove will warm when the flames are fully formed. This may take 5 to 10 seconds at room temperature. In cold conditions, below 35 degrees Fahrenheit, the warm-up time may be 60 seconds. Room temperature is something, you know, what's room temperature? The room in my house, room temperature in my house during the winter is about 61, 62 degrees. In the summer, of course, it would be higher. Right now, in right here where we are, it's 48 degrees. So I'm going to go with the 60 seconds. I'm going to use a propane, I mean a butane lighter to light it. Let's let this go for 60 seconds. You can see the nice yellow flame, that's your isopropyl. That's not me, that must be my wife doing something. I don't think it's me setting off the smoke detector. Okay, what else did I want to say here while we're waiting for this? I have a heat barrier on this. John had said that it's good to put an aluminum plate on it. Uh, one, to protect the ground from any alcohol that might spill. Plus, it reflects the heat. Now, I don't use an aluminum plate. What I use is a cardboard disc that I've covered with aluminum tape. So this acts, I use this especially under my uh, Trangia burners because they're, they don't like the cold that much either. But this will reflect the heat up and protect the ground. Okay, we're on 57, 58. I got two cups of water here, setting at 60 degrees. And let's see where this goes. I'll do a camera two shot from underneath. We're now three minutes into the test. The temperature's up to 140. Really nice flames. In this case, I didn't put a windscreen on because, except for my talking, there isn't any real breeze here. So you can see it's really making, the stove is really making for a nice flame. Nice blue flame. There we have 210. 
to 11. Come on. 212 at 824. Actually, that's minus one minute, so it's 724. Okay, not bad. Let me take this off the burner. John says take this off the stove with the last couple of, you know, dregs so it doesn't put soot on the bottom of the pot. So unlike my other tests where I just let it keep running until it runs out, <clears throat> if I do that, it'll definitely put soot on the pot. Let me just dump this out. Okay, hey, look at that. Nothing. Hot, but nothing. Boy, this pot's getting a little beat up. Not bad. Now, one thing that I was always playing with, uh, isopropyl is good for if you need to light up an area. Uh, methanol, or denatured alcohol, burns kind of bluish, and it's hard to see. Not hard to see isopropyl, so if you needed a, a quick light somewhere and you had isopropyl with you, that's a good way to do it. Okay, let's go back on this. <clears throat> that was two cups of water setting at 60 degrees. Came to a boil in 7 minutes and 24 seconds using 20 milliliters of isopropyl 91% alcohol. Or isopropyl alcohol 91%. And it still had leftover, so... You know, if you don't mind setting up your pot, you could call it, cut it back a little bit. But that was 20 milliliters. John had said that, that seems like a lot, but he said that up to the bottom of these breather holes, if you filled it up that high, that would be one fluid ounce. So if you needed a longer burn, you could do that, do it with that. But this was just 20 milliliters. Okay, I'm kind of rambling here. Okay, I think that's about it. Uh, again, I'll leave links down below to where I did tests on this prototype stove. They're interesting. On that one, just in passing here, uh, the first test that I did on that <coughs> was with 70% alcohol. Did I do that with all of them? Yeah. Anyway, 70% alcohol and it came to a boil in seven minutes and four seconds but that was at a room temperature of 67 degrees this is the room temperature of what it has 49 there now it was 47 so not bad again I thank John for sending me this stuff I thank you for watching I look forward to your input questions remarks helpful suggestions and as always watch for my buddy Max Bye now.